Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today, we are going to explore some more angle relationships. Now, in the last lesson, we learned how uh, all about what an angle is, vertex, sides, um, different types of angles, how to measure angles or find the measurements. Today, we're gonna be looking at different angle relationships between multiple angles. So starting with some vocab terms, first we have adjacent angles. Now the vocabulary, the definition for this is a little complicated. It says adjacent angles are two coplanar angles, there's a word for you, coplanar angles with a common side and a common vertex, no common interior points. Sounds really complicated, it's really not that bad. So in a diagram, an adjacent angle are two angles that are connected. They're connected with a common side. So if I have this angle here and this angle here, they share that common side, they share a common vertex, and they don't overlap. There's no overlap between the two angles. So if I have, let's just put some points here, A, B, C, D, angle A, B, C, and angle C, B, D, Oops, my angle symbol's a little sloppy. Hopefully you'll forgive me. Angle CBD are adjacent. So it just means that they're connected with the side, they don't overlap, they share that vertex point. All right, vertical angles are two angles whose sides are opposite rays. So let's draw, so if this is my vertex, opposite rays, remember, are two rays that go in exactly opposite directions, so they make a straight line. And then, if I draw another set of opposite rays, we end up with a picture like this. Now, our vertical angles are not gonna be adjacent. They're not gonna share a side. They are gonna share a vertex, and their sides are opposite rays. I like to think of it as vertical angles. <laughs> it's just a little fun. Hopefully, it'll help you remember vertical angles. All right, so here, vertical angles, if I have, let's just put A, B, C, D, and E, I would have, um, well, let's do this in two ways. We actually have two pairs of vertical angles here. We have angle A, B, C, and angle uh, D, B, E, so the top and bottom of our X, our vertical angles, are vertical angles, or we also have another set that are across from each other. And I'll put um, red markings here. It's gonna kinda go through my B a little bit. Sorry about that. So I've got angle uh, A, B, D, and angle C, B, E are also vertical angles. So it can be the top and bottom, or it can be side by side. It just has to be across from each other in our vertical angle X. All right, uh, complementary angles are two angles whose measures add to 90 degrees. So complementary angles, um, we're gonna, they can be connected. Sometimes they're connected, sometimes they're not. If I have two angles here, let's make this 30 degrees. And then I have, um, let's just do this one at 60 degrees. These would be complementary. All right, you might also see um, a 90 degree angle, a right angle split up into, let's make it 20 and 70. So again, they add to 90. Those are gonna be complementary angles. Supplementary angles are when the angles add to 180. So I could have an obtuse angle, 120 degrees, and I can have a 60 degree angle, and those put together are gonna be supplementary. Um, we might also see it put together where they're adjacent, like this. Let's make it, I don't know, 130 and 50 degrees. So again, that's gonna be supplementary angles. So two angles that add together to be 180 degrees are supplementary. If they add together to be 90 degrees, they're complementary. You'll just need to practice those. Okay, oh, 
One thing that we actually didn't learn here, and let's go back up to our vocab. Really, really important point. Let's put a big star so that we remember it. Vertical angles, vertical angles are always congruent. Lots of exclamation marks. We want to really remember that piece. We actually call it the vertical angle theorem. So let's put in parentheses, and I'm going to abbreviate vertical angle THM for theorem. Vertical angle theorem is that vertical angles are always congruent. So we can use that rule, that theorem there, to solve our first example. It says solve for x. We have our vertical angles here and here. And we know our vertical angle theorem. And let's put vert. I'm going to use my little angle symbol theorem. So vertical angle theorem says that those two angles have to be congruent. To solve for x, we can simply set them equal to each other because remember, congruent angles have the same measure. They're equal, 3x plus 11. And we can solve for x here. So I get my like terms together, and I'm actually going to do it in one step. I'm going to move my x's, and I'm going to move my integer to the other side. So now I've got, just to double check, we can see that our 7s cross out and our x's cross out there. We always want to double check. 2x equals 4, so x is 2. If we wanted to check our answer, we can always plug that back into our angles and make sure that it is actually the same measurement. So we can do that. Let's, let's do it really quick. So here I've got 5 times 2 plus 7. That's going to be 10 plus 7 is 17 degrees. So this angle here is 17 degrees. All right, and then let's check 3 times 2 plus 11. 6 plus 11 is also 17 degrees. So I know if they're both 17 degrees, they're both equal, that my x is correct. x equals 2. All right, next example, we have two complementary angles. Complementary angles, which remember, means that they add to 90 degrees. So here, it's not telling me that they're equal. I can't assume, even if I think it looks like it's split right down the middle, I can't assume that those two angles are equal. All I know is that together, they make 90 degrees because I was given that 90 degree symbol on the other side. So I can take my angle addition postulate and take 6x plus 18 and add it to 42 minus 3x and set it equal to 90 degrees because they're complementary angles. And then again, combine my like terms. 6x minus 3x gives me 3x. 42 plus 18 is 60 equals 90. Subtract my 60 to both sides. 3x is 30, so x is 10. Again, we're going to want to double check to make sure we have this right. If I have 42 minus 3 times 10, I get 42 minus 30, which is 12. So if this is 12 degrees, then hopefully that other one is going to give us enough that they add to 90. So let's see, 6 times 10 plus 18 is going to be 60 plus 18, which is 78. If this is 78 degrees, then 78 plus 12 gives me 90 degrees. And I know that my x is correct. I checked my answer. All right, moving on, we have a couple more terms here. Uh, first one is linear pair angles. So if we think about the term linear, linear means line. So linear pair angles are going to be angles that form a straight line. So I can have something that looks like this, linear pair angle. So this one and this one form a straight line. Sometimes we're actually going to have more than just two angles. It could be something like this, where I have one, two, three angles that all put together form that straight line. We might also have what looks to be our vertical angle set up, but instead of doing the angles across from each other, we have two angles 
that are right next to each other would be our linear pair. If we ignore that other part of our x, it looks just like the other um, piece of, or our other diagrams in this situation. So these are all linear pair angles, and our linear pair postulate, kind of like that theorem, remember postulate just means a rule, uh, means that angles in a linear pair are always supplementary. And remember, supplementary means that they add to 180 degrees. So you can think of the linear pair postulate in either way. Vertical angles, vertical angles, always congruent. Linear pair, always supplementary. All right, and the last term here, we have an angle bisector is a ray that divides or bisects an angle into two congruent parts. So if I have, let's just say I have this angle here, A, B, and C, and I take a ray and I cut it exactly in half, which means this part has to be congruent to this part. The, the little arc marks have to match, meaning that they're congruent. Then I know that BD, ray BD, is an angle bisector and angle ABD has to be congruent to angle DBC. So angle bisector means we have now two congruent angles. All right, let's look at a couple examples. We have example 2A. Angle ADB and angle BDC are a linear pair. There's a key term. We're going to want to use that. A measure of angle ADB is 3x plus 14. Measure of angle BDC is 5x minus 2. And they want us to find the measure of those two angles. Now, if you notice, we don't have a diagram this time. So we're going to have to draw our own diagram. In geometry, it's always a good idea to have a diagram. And I know that they're going to be a linear pair, so I'm going to draw my linear pair like this. I like to draw my linear pair like that a lot of the times. All right, and then let's label our points. We have angle A, D, B, and B, D, C. So our points should go something like that. Now, I want to put the information that they give me into my diagram. So if A, D, B is 3x plus 14, I want to put that over here. 3x plus 14, B, D, C is 5x minus 2. What are the measures of those two angles? All right. So we know that a linear pair, linear pair postulate, tells me that they are supplementary or that they add to 180 degrees. So I can take these two angles and add them together and make it equal to 180 to get my equation. So 3x plus 14, oops, not equals, plus, we have to add, plus 5x minus 2 equals 180. Now I can solve for x. So we have 8x plus 12 is 180. I need to subtract my 12. 8x is going to be, well, let's see. We've got 8. 7 minus 1 is 6. So 168 divide by 8. And x is going to be 21. All right, and we can plug that back in to double check our answers. And we can just do it on the side here. Let's see. So check. All right, 3 times 21 plus 14. That's going to be 63 plus 14, which gives us 77. All right. And then we have 5 times 21 plus, oops, not plus, we need minus 2. We're plugging it into 5x minus 2. That's going to be, let's see, 5 times 20 is 100 plus another 5. So 105 minus 2 is 103. And remember, if it says it's a linear pair, we need them to be supplementary. So we need to make sure that 77 and 103 give us 180 degrees. So carry the 1, 8, and we are done. So now we've solved for x. 
we plug that back in to check our answer, but actually in doing so, we needed to do that anyways to finish our problem. So here I have the measure of angle ADB is, what did we have, 77 degrees, and the measure of angle BDC is 103 degrees. All right, and there is, oops, box our answers, and there's our answers for that example. All right, moving on to our last example here. Ray BD bisects angle ABC. All right, again, we don't have a diagram here, so even before I read the rest of it, I can draw my picture. I have an angle ABC, and I need the ray BD to bisect that angle, so I'm gonna draw a ray and put a D here to show that that's ray BD. Now I need to solve for X, find the measure of angle ABC. So there's what I need to do in this problem. Given that ABD is 3X plus 20, 3X plus 20, all right, and CBD is 6X minus 16. Okay, so now we have our diagram. We're just missing one other piece of information. What do we know about those two parts of the angles? Well, it said that BD bisects. That is a key term, and bisect means it cuts it exactly in half. So I know that this angle is equal to that angle. So I can use that information to make my equation. 3x plus 20 has to equal 6x minus 16. And solving for x, I have 20 equals 3x minus 16. Add our 16. 36 is 3x. Let's move this up just a little bit. Oops, extend our page. All right, and then divide by 3, and x is 12. Now, if we notice, we can plug that back in to double check. We need them to be the same. So if I want to check my work, I have 3 times 12 plus 20. That's going to be 36 plus 20, which gives me 56 degrees. And then the other one is 6 times 12 minus 16. 6 times 12 is 72. Minus 16 gives me 56. All right, so our math is correct. Now we need to go back. We solved for x. I know x is 12 because I checked my answer. And it says I also need to find the measure of angle ABC. All right, let's look at our diagram and figure out which angle we actually need. ABC is the large angle, the overlapping angle, when we take the two angles that we worked with and put them together. So we actually need 56 plus 56 to get the measure of angle ABC. So there I've got 112 degrees. All right. And that concludes our lesson for today. Thanks for watching and remember math is fundamental.